All right, so we're picking up where we left off with the uh, 5.3 blower build. You can see I got the uh, main bearings in. I want to talk briefly on the uh, the oil cooler kit I got from Getem Garage. I went ahead and installed the uh, the oil cooling jets that squirt to the bottom of the pistons um, from the uh, the oil galley here, and so. You can see on this one back here, I had to uh, kind of grind that one down so we had more clearance or relief. So the reason for that is uh, some of the tools I had weren't really up to the job. So let's talk about the tools in this, uh, in this little build. So I broke two of my build, drill bits in the, uh, in the process. These are the uh, Apaca 12 uh, number 28 drill bits, but these are cobalt steel, and these worked a lot better, and I didn't break uh, as many when I upgraded to the cobalt drill bits. I had no issues at all with the, uh, with the tap here, the drill tap, that worked just fine. Now the tap in the kit, I did break that off, but it didn't break off terribly, so I was able to extract it from the... Uh, um, the hole I was making, the threaded hole, and I went ahead and tried to upgrade to one of these as a, instead of an Allen wrench, and for some reason this this little insert is about a sixty-fourth too small, and so it wound up stripping some of the uh, uh, brass oil jets. So, a couple lessons learned here: buy an extra bottoming tap if you're going to thread in your your bat brass jets with a, like a, a quarter inch drive ratchet and you're using one of these little inserts these little guys get the highest quality you have just to make sure that uh, that this end point is the uh, actual correct diameter and pick up an extra couple drill bits and get the cobalt version that way uh, that way they're a little stronger so Anyway, there's other people that have done this and shown it on their YouTube page, so they, they've already covered this uh, installation, but those are the lessons learned that I, uh, that I have for you. So, All right, so our ring gaps came out 20 thousandths and 20 thousandths. This is the top ring. This is the second ring. And our oil rings came out to 56 thousandths uh, measurement. We stuffed those in the bore. Took our feeler gauge and uh, and took the measurement. So all of our rings have been done, and we're going to go ahead and start putting those in shortly. All right, main bearings are in, and so I've laid the crankshaft inside as well. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, main bearing caps on and use some plastic gauge to verify all the clearances. We're going to be looking for 0 .0008 to 0 .0025 for the uh, plastic gauge readings. All right, this plastic gauge measures from 0 0.001 to 0 0.003 of an inch. All right, so starting to pull the main caps off here. And you can see the plastic gauge right on that bearing surface. I'll show you a quick tr trick that uh, helps me get these uh, main caps off that are uh, interference fit. So a lot of times if you rock these a little bit, they'll, they'll sneak out. You pull the bolts up like this and use those as levers. And you can move it back and forth. And you can break loose <clears throat> that first little bit of interference fit. Pull these guys out, then I'll take this breaker bar here, nice and easy, sneak it in here, grab on this side and pull up just a little bit, give a little wiggle, come up a little more, sometimes it needs a little more rocking.
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our results from the plastic gauge. Whoa. Maybe a little guy here. Looks like we're pretty close to 0 0.0015 on this journal. And whew, that'll be a little difficult to get into. Let's just skip it and go back to it. Make it easy to videotape. Rip. Okay, again, that's the zero zero one five. So I'll go ahead and go through um, with both hands instead of holding the camera and get the uh, measurements done and report back to you if there's any uh, anomalies. All right, results are in. So 0015, 0015, 0 0.001, 0 0.0015, and 0 0.0015. The, uh, the range is 0 0.0008 to 0 0.0025, so we're well within spec on the plastic gauge. If I got a weird um, measurement, then I would use my micrometer and just double check everything, and um, especially if you're swapping cranks and bearings and stuff. But right now, you know, stock crank and bearings and parts, uh, plastic gauge is, is definitely an accurate enough tool for, for what we're doing here. So anyway, moving on. Here's some of the tools and assembly lubricants that I'm going to use to uh, assemble the engine. Uh, ARP's Ultra Torque uh, Bull Lubricant, Federal Mogul's uh, Cam Bearing and Main Bearing Lubricant, and Caracas Cloth. So when you find little imperfections in either a bearing or the uh, you need to polish up your crankshaft a little bit just to you know give her a little polish before installation, the stuff works great. So here's a good opportunity to show the, how I like to use the Caracas cloth. You'll notice that this cam bearing has got the smallest little imperfection here, like little divot in it. And so I've ran my finger over it a couple times and I felt that there is just the slightest uh, imperfection. So this Caracas cloth is like a polishing cloth. And so I'm going to take it in here and just kind of work it and see if I can knock down the high sides. Of the uh, of the cam bearing imperfection, and so you can see it kind of puts a just the slightest little abrasive in it and uh, and polishes out the high spot. So I think that's going to be good stuff. I just love the color of this stuff. I know it's not very technical or useful information, but it's just pretty. And stringy. It's like slime from Ghostbusters. Woo. All right, so here we go. Little ARP Ultra Torque. Also like to get it on the bottom of the heads of the bolts here. Cuz that's where some friction is as well when you're uh, tightening her down. It's funny you can really feel the difference too between using just engine oil versus this assembly lubricant, it's really slick. So it'll give me some good torque values. I'm pretty confident. And so I'm going to run these down to 60 foot-pounds. I'm not going to use the uh, um, whatever foot-pounds plus an angle. Um, I'm not thoroughly confident that these bolts require that type of special process. Everybody can argue with me if you want, but uh, I think 60 foot-pounds all the way around will be just fine. So. We'll find out. If it blows sky high, then I guess I was wrong. 
So I'm just taking these bolts and running them down a little bit just to snug them up before I start torquing them. And if you take your ratchet, right, and you take your finger and grab it like this so you don't have a whole lot of torque on the back of the ratchet handle, if you take your two fingers on front and two on the back and twist it like as hard as you can with your hand, that usually comes out to approximately 25 foot-pounds, you know, give or take. I mean, I'm no torque wrench, but uh, uh, that kind of gets you close. So in your mind, you can know, okay, can't go super heavy when you're cranking this down on when you're pre-tightening your aluminum, um, you know, bolts into aluminum. But here, I like to hit them about, snug them down with my hand, and then I'll come back with a torque wrench tighten everything down to 25 foot-pounds, back everything back off, that way I can make sure the main cap is seated down. I think that's a, a good procedure. Uh, I read that in the LS building book, and, uh, and yeah, I incorporate it in pretty much every engine I build, so that's a good plan. So a quick recap of what's going on here with this engine is it's a 5.3 and a 4.8 combined. So I've got a Gen 4 4.8 with Gen 4 rods, right? The stronger rods. But I'm using the Gen 3 5.3 block. So in the, my previous video, I went over all the maths on how we're, we're getting that done. But this is the interesting piece here. So the Gen 4 rods, their wrist pins are point. 943. Okay, so the diameter of that wrist pin that it allows is 0.943. A lot of high performance Chevrolet pistons come in a 0.927 wrist pin. So I took my rods here to the machine shop and I had them bushed down to 0.927 to use these performance pistons. So and they also machined a little hole in there, oil hole for me, because you'll notice that there's no oil grooves inside this bronze bushing. So now I can use the .927 high performance pistons from Summon forged and the 927 wrist pin. While my rods were at the shop, I not only had them cleaned, but I had them shot peened. So it both cleaned them up and increased the, uh, the external uh, surface structure strength of these Gen 4 rods. So these are Gen 4s and shot peened, bushed out to 927 so we can use the forged pistons. Here's the bronze bushing I had made. I had these made up at uh, Oliver Oliver Rods up in northern Michigan and um, if you need a set I've got an extra set sitting here or I can give you the uh, the order number as well and you can order your own uh, machine if you're putting things together and making it work old school hot rodding like um, like I like to do. So anyway, hit me up. I can send it to you. All right, so we're hanging our last piston on our last rod here. And so as I've muddled through uh, seven already, uh, I've got my little process here, so we'll go over it. So putting these snap rings in. I'll put these, put it way in the back like this first. Push it down with my thumb. Okay, then try to pry her up here and get it barked in the spot. Okay, now that it's there, I've got a 16 millimeter socket that fits almost the same size as the wrist pin. And so what I'll do is give it a shove in and she clicks right in there. See how it's seated? We've got the orientation of the piston forward here and we're going to use our paperwork and orient the rings. So bottom ring or oil ring here. We'll put the expander ring in. This goes towards the back. Top part of our oil ring. The top section I should say. These two are offset up here on this side.
and our expander is uh, the seam is back here. Now we'll go with the second ring with the dot straight up and it'll be on our side. So I like to get them real close to the ring land in the piston. Give, them, give it a pull away from each other. A lot of times it'll go in without getting too wild. Then flip the piston over Then I'll take this top ring, there's no dot on it, so either way is up. Open it, and flip her down. Okay, take some oil. On both sides. Oil her up. Okay, let's go ahead and put some bearings in it. All right, that feels right. So we've got our uh, ring compressor, the uh, 3.780. These are really great. I recommend picking them up for whatever engine you're building. Saves time, lots of time. So here we go. There we go. So um, push the pistons up into position. Almost all the way. So now I'll drop a little bearing lube on it. Right. Same thing for the other side. Okay, we'll go ahead and loop up our bolts here. Okay, so this one goes on number seven. I just numbered the side that number seven's on. So at 45 foot-pounds of torque with the ARP uh, lube, it gave me the uh, the correct plastic gauge spread. So the uh, uh, the, the bearing clearances are correct at this uh, foot-pound. So for my application, this worked real well. So let's get going to 25, 35, 45. All right, so we've buttoned up the bottom end, the clearances are checked, and it rotates really nice. So stop back in for the uh, cam installation, heads installation, and there's the lower Holly intake, and a Ford GT500 supercharger. So all we need is for Tom DeMuse to send us that part. The adapter that mates the GT500 supercharger to the Holly low ram intake for the LS applications. So come on back, we got some cool stuff to show.